coming up next on Temple Update. Spring fling turned deadly last Wednesday when a 19-year-old Westchester student fell from a roof. We have a follow-up to the story. Plus, Temple students were at the Boston Marathon to treat blisters and fractures, but wound up doing much more. Kate Lavender is live at the School of Podiatric Medicine. Hello, I'm Chase Sr. And I'm Megan McNerney. Temple Update is next. Hello and welcome to Temple Update. I'm Megan McNerney. And I'm Chase Senior. We begin with campus safety's response to the accident that claimed the life of a young woman who fell from the rooftop of an off-campus house during a post-spring fling party. Temple University's spring fling is known as a day of fun food and events. But what has many people talking this year is about the tragic incident that occurred hours after spring fling officially came to an end. A 19-year-old Westchester University student, Allie Fosnott, fell to her death last Wednesday evening from the third floor of a row house on North 18th Street. Police say as many as 40 people were partying on the roof when Fosnott tripped over a 10-inch ledge. This has many students wondering about the future of Spring Fling and any plans to review safety policies. And joining us now is Update's Corinne Simmons. Corinne, you have the latest on Temple's response to this incident. Yes, I do. Thanks, Megan. I spoke with the Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Stephanie Ives, who says the university is discussing the possibility of certain consequences Temple may face in lieu of the incident. It would be irresponsible and um, disrespectful to the student to not take a look at our environment. And while no decisions have been made at this point, there are conversations happening at every level about spring fling and about how to move forward. Before the university can move forward, understanding current weaknesses will be necessary. Defining campus boundaries has been an ongoing issue the university faces. Current student body president David Lopez explains the complications campus safety services endure when dealing with a large student population living off campus. It comes down to a few different factors, one of which is the presence of security. And we're in that difficult area because the campus police only have jurisdiction over a certain area. And then it kind of falls back on the Philadelphia Police Department. The university released a statement to us regarding their current efforts to better protect students living off campus. The statement reads, We know that Temple Area landlords are working to address the issue of rooftop access and to warn students about the dangers. They've been advised to report incidents of students on rooftops to the Philadelphia Police. One initiative student government would like to emphasize is the actual meaning behind the campus-wide event. Students put in so much work, they put in so much effort, they're working nonstop at this university. We all have great career paths that we're headed down, but sometimes it's great to just relax a little bit and enjoy yourself and be around this campus and see all of that, what Temple has to offer. Another thing, another thing student government is advised to be mindful of is your surroundings and responsibilities throughout the entire year, not just spring fling. That's true. You always have to watch out. It's truly a tragedy. We offer our condolences to everyone involved. Yes. Thanks, Thanks Corinne. Corinne. A Temple School of Podiatry professor and his students who found themselves at the scene of the April 15th bombing were honored at the Wells Fargo Center Tuesday evening during the Flyers game. Dr. Howard Paula Marchuk and students were at the marathon to help treat runners' injuries. The Flyers showed their support by giving the professor and students jerseys with Temple University School of Podiatric Medicine on the back. The Flyers also raised over $42,000 for the victims of the Boston bombings. And now joining us live at the School of Podiatric Medicine is Kate Lavender. Hi, Kate. You got to speak with the professor. What did he have to say? Hello, Megan and Chase. I'm live at the Temple University School of Podiatric Medicine, where I spoke with Dr. Paula Marchuk. For the past 28 years, he has taken his top 10 podiatry students to the Boston Marathon for fun and training. But the highlight of the semester turned into horror when a bomb exploded near where the Temple crew was set up. Dr. Paula Marchuk told me that the most shocking part of the experience was seeing a festive environment of happy, healthy runners turn into misery. 
in my head, I thought this is this is 9-11. The first Boston Marathon bomb exploded about 100 yards away from the tent where Dr. Howard Palomarchuk and his Temple University sports medicine students were stationed. At first, Palomarchuk thought it was an industrial accident, but fear quickly set in. You heard one bomb then the second, and you, you're almost bracing yourself for the third. Podiatry student Matt Reminter has worked at marathons in the past and was not expecting to treat more than blisters and ankle sprains. It was very surreal. Um, it was it was like a war zone. We keep talking about it. It was very much like a war zone. Walking back, just seeing all these different things, hearing all these different stories about more bombs being found and then hearing that possibly a third bomb went off. Palomarchuk describes the front line. Those that are able to walk are, are are shredded. I mean, their clothes are shredded. There's blood pouring out of different, I don't know if that's a bad word, but there's blood coming out of different areas of their body. Dr. Palomarchuk and Rementor say not a second was wasted. The volunteers and medics all came together to help. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Kate. Temple University and the Red Cross hosted a blood drive at the Hoel on Wednesday. Participants gathered at the Jewish Center to donate blood for a good cause. Walk-ins were allowed, but many registered online. This is one of many blood drives the university offers throughout the semester. Alumni weekend started off with a big swing and a home run at Citizens Bank Park this past weekend. Ali Bristow has more. Ballpark on Friday, April 19th, to watch the Bills take on National League rivals, the St. Louis Cardinals. For the third year, the Temple University Alumni Association is sponsoring Alumni Weekend. It takes place every April, and this year we have over 40 events that are taking place on multiple campuses that are designed to bring students and alumni together. The reception took place between 5 p.m. and the first pitch at 7.05. Alumni shared what being a Temple Owl means to them. When I was at Temple, I had a work-study grant. I landed a job in the district attorney's office, and it paved the way for my career. So everything I've done is as a result of being at Temple. I'm proud to be a Temple grad because I learned my craft very well there, and they have a good reputation, and they've done wonders with the campus. It brings a lot of um, culture, uh, science, and uh, learning to the city of Philadelphia. Grads described some of their fondest memories and their excitement for Alumni Weekend. My dad, he'll start taking me to games before I can work, and I've uh, been a diehard ever since. And I'll be chairing White Day tomorrow. I, from an educational standpoint, I thought Temple was terrific. Uh, my wife has her master's from uh, Temple, my son graduated from law school. So we're uh, a Temple family. The best way to understand Temple Made is to see it in action. One thing's for sure, these former owls are definitely Temple Made. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Allie Bristow. And continuing with Alumni Weekend, Temple's class of 2003 flew back to the nest for their 10-year reunion. The alumni spent their Saturday night dancing, laughing, and reuniting with friends they have not seen in a decade. President Neil Theobald also made an appearance where he talked to alumni about their Temple University experience. Together, the class donated more than $70,000 to the university. We're now joined by Chris Turner, who has information on Wall Street making its way to Temple. Thanks a lot, Chase. Wall Street isn't just located in New York anymore. The faculty at Temple's Alter Hall have designed a realistic fund to put upperclassmen into a similar working environment within the classroom. Students at the Fox School of Business are making the most out of the economy. Thanks in part to donations from former school dean William C. Dunkelberg, students manage real money through the OUT Fund. Professor Jonathan Scott was part of the fund startup. The dean wanted to have a student-managed investment fund that could be uh, domiciled in our what's called our capital markets room. Students are split up in the six sectors mimicking the S&P 500. Cindy Axelrod was recently hired as director of the OUT Fund and is very optimistic about its progress. What I've told the students is that every single day a particular stock needs to earn the right to be in the portfolio. And we have had instances that the stocks have not earned their right to maintain their position and we have sold them. So have we kept up with the S&P 500 with our benchmark? No. Have we learned an awful lot along the way? Absolutely. By dealing with real money, students are more serious about taking risks and more thorough with their analysis. This has given students like Jonathan Boyer internship type experience while in the school. It's what I want to do when I graduate, equity research. So being able to do it now um, 
and getting a lot of the speakers and experience to, to write these reports and learn from some of the older guys is great. In the capital market room, students like Darmesh Patel use state-of-the-art investment software and monitor Bloomberg terminals in order to keep track of the fund's investments. Benjamin Budenstein works with analysis from different sectors within the fund. We have a few students from um, from outside of the business school who are econ majors and they'll come in and work on that sector. Um, we also have a few mathematics majors who come in and work on uh, just quantitative um, analysis. Currently the Al Fund has a goal of $200,000 in order to help establish a scholarship in the name of the founder and first director of Temple's Real Estate Institute, Jay Lamont. A mock fund called the Fox Fund is used by underclassmen to prepare themselves for the classes with the Al Fund and is also available to all students within the university. Now, $200,000 $200, is mm -hmm. certainly a tall task, but it would be really interesting to see the Al Fund reach its goal. Yes, it would. Yes. Definitely. That's great. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. And with graduation only a few weeks away, it's time to pick up your caps and gowns for the big day. The Office of Sustainability is offering a refreshing deal to graduates who will recycle their gowns after graduation by rewarding participants with a free drink ticket for Morgan's Pier. There will be an event to celebrate the class of 2013 on Thursday, May 30th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the pier. For those of you that did not know, Earth Day was on Monday. Updates Will Fitch headed down to Penn Treaty Park while volunteers donated their time to celebrate. It was a windy afternoon in Penn Treaty Park as the second most famous statue of William Penn stared blankly at a group of diligent Earth Day volunteers. Choosing to spend their Monday with gardening tools in their gloved hands, these dedicated men and women worked hard to commemorate the 44th birthday of Earth Day. Yeah, every Earth Day we try to mobilize volunteers to do something like this. Today we have some volunteers from Subaru and from the community who are getting together to green the neighborhood, do some weeding, planting flowers. In between pruning thorns, I caught up with Kathleen Landry, who was more than happy to lend a hand. So that seemed to be a nice way to spend Earth Day and accomplish something small. So it's, it's a way of uh, giving back to the community. Subaru employees at the event had a passion for preservation. Every year we do a big festival with Greens Grow and it's one of the uh, organizations in the community that we like to support. The organizers of the Earth Day event, Greens Grow Farms, located in scenic Kensington, Philadelphia, operate a farmstead that's open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays. From its humble beginnings as a lettuce garden, Greens Grow Farms has become a model of urban agriculture. And to all you viewers out there feeling down in the dumps about missing Earth Day, I've got some good news. So long as the Earth is still around, Greens Grow Farms is always looking for more volunteers next Earth Day. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Will Fitch. Thanks, Will. Still to come on Temple Update, families left their worries on land as they set sail on the spirit of Philadelphia for the 11th annual Family Fun Day Cruise. That's right, and the Philadelphia Skyscraper is now the world's largest video game. We'll take you to the 29-story Circus Center building where the game is on display for Philly Tech Week. And I'm Dan Marcel. The weather's been flip-flopping on us for the past few weeks, but it's not flip-flops yet. I'll tell you when it's going to get warmer, plus the five-day forecast coming up. And Simone Cugarulo will be at the sports desk with a look at the football team's cherry and white game. Don't go anywhere. Temple Update will be back in 90 seconds. Welcome back to Temple Update. Pediatric patients and their families left their worries at the dock and enjoyed a day at the sea. Alexander Sirachi has more. Each year, the Kelly Ann Dolan Memorial Fund partners with the Spirit of Philadelphia to provide a lunch and cruise for patients from major pediatric hospitals in the Philadelphia area. Peggy Dolan started the fund 36 years ago. The foundation started from my own experiences and my husband's experiences in taking care of a severely ill child. Um, Kellyanne was diagnosed at the age of two with a very rare form of leukemia. Families gathered for the 11th annual Family Fun Day Cruise and enjoyed a delicious buffet and plenty of entertainment. It's a good day to come out. It's for her. I'm, I'm all for it. The Kelly Dolan Memorial Fund provides financial assistance for needs not covered by insurance for families whose children are seriously ill. The fund has assisted over 22,000 families in crisis throughout Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Life has a purpose, you know, and you just have to be open to the message of what your role is in life. 
This greatly treasured partnership has allowed the fund to offer approximately 3,500 parents, seriously ill children, and their siblings a day of respite from the burdens that serious illness brings. Reporting for Temple Update, I'm Alexander Saracci. Tim Riley is now standing by in the newsroom with the latest entertainment news. And for all you gamers out there, Tim has information on the world's largest video game. That's right, dude. Thanks, Chase. Kicking off Philly Tech Week, a Drexel University professor made his video game dream five years in the making come true. Let's take a look. On Friday, April 19th and Wednesday, April 24th, the Philadelphia skyline hosted the world's largest video game. The Sierra Center, standing a gargantuan 29 stories high, became the battleground for gamers to go head-to-head -head in the classic game of Pong. On Friday, a dry run of Pong was made available to the people who had won a lottery drawing earlier this year. Experiencing a few technical difficulties, the bugs were taken out for the ultimate gaming experience on Wednesday. In addition to Pong, classic games such as Tetris and Tron's Light Cycle game were also demoed for Philadelphia. Frank Lee, a professor at Drexel University, had envisioned this event five years ago traveling down Route 76 and has finally made it into a reality. Um, and this project is a really nice example, a demonstration of creativity and technology coming together in a mashup uh, for this world's biggest video game project. Lee stated that this event could become an annual happening and that the winners of these titanic video game matches will compete in a tournament next year. In other entertainment news, on Friday, director and Temple alumna Jessica Vale held a viewing of her recently critically acclaimed documentary, Small, Small Thing. The documentary tells the tragic story of seven-year-old Olivia Zinna, a Liberian sexual assault victim whose horrific situation caused a dra groundbreaking drama involving the Liberian government. Once I got to know Olivia and met her mother, um, I kind of felt like this was a, a bigger story and it's something that warranted more investigation. Mm -hmm. The documentary held its world premiere at Palm Beach International Film Festival two weeks ago and has received a lot of attention since. After the showing, Vail, along with members of the Holistic Education for Advocating Leadership, or HEAL, held a Q&A where the audience was able to voice their views and questions regarding the film. And that's all for this week's entertainment. Uh, Megan and Chase, back to you. Thank you, Tim. MSNBC's Rachel Maddow held a book signing on the University of Pennsylvania's campus. Moza Robbins was there. Mayor Michael Nutter welcomed author and MSNBC talk show host Rachel Maddow to the city. Maddow is promoting her new book, Drift, The Unmooring of the American Military. She used to reside here in the city and was overcome by the warm welcome she received from officials and fans. Wow, it's kind of amazing. I did not know any of this was going to happen. Um, especially weird because I, when I lived in Philadelphia, which was a long time ago when I was a very different person, um, this is not the kind of way that I imagined coming back. Congresswoman Allison Schwartz was in attendance and reminded the crowd of her bid for governor. Uh, as I was just this past Monday night when I announced for governor. Every seat was filled as fans of all ages lined the street waiting to get a seat at UPenn's Irvine Auditorium. Ticket holders to the event also received a signed copy of her new book. Mayor Nutter spoke briefly and shared laughs with Matto before sharing his thoughts about the importance of student involvement. Students uh, are usually um, uh, the most vocal and uh, vigorous advocates. Uh, and uh, voices uh, that are consistent about what's going on uh, in public policy. Reporting from the University of Pennsylvania for Temple Update, I'm Melissa Robbins. There's still much more to come on Temple Update. Dan Marset will be here to give you a look at the weekend forecast. And it's been a jam-packed week here at the sports desk. From the lacrosse ladies saying farewell to the seniors to the football team back in action, I'm Simone Cucarulo with the latest in Temple Athletics. Temple Update, we'll be right back. April is almost over and what a month it's been for Temple Athletics. Hello my fellow sports fanatics and welcome to the Sports Desk. I'm Simone Cucarulo and as always we're here to fill you in on a spring sports season that's flying by before our eyes. Let's start off with a little Temple Baseball. The boys returned to Ambler this week to take on the Villanova Wildcats at Skip Wilson Field. Derek Peterson led the Owls going 3 for 5 at bat and scored two runs on the day. Elijah Yarbrough went 2 for 3 and had a 2 RBI day from the plate. 
The Owls used five pitchers to seal the 8-4 win. Catch them at Ambler this weekend as they take on UNC Charlotte. Lady Lacks took to Geezy Field over the weekend to honor their graduating Owls on Senior Day. Senior Stephanie Parcell led the pack with four goals. She had help from fellow senior Charlotte Swobola, who chalked up a hat trick. After strong offensive performances, the Spiders pulled it out with a 16-15 win. Women's Lacks earned a third seed in the A-10 tournament, and they'll be playing in UMass this weekend. Football wrapped up their spring training with the annual Cherry and White game held at Edberg Olsen Hall on 10th and Diamond. Matt Rule's Cherry and White hit the field to display their progress from the offseason. Great plays from seniors Chris Coyer and Cody Booth led White to defeat Cherry 34-28. They'll be back August 31st to take on Notre Dame. Kickoff is set for 3.30 on NBC. And student athletes gathered in the Leah Chorus Center for the annual Breakfast of Champions, which honored 300 Owls for their accomplishments on and off the field. Alex Ty from Men's Gymnastics and Katie Briglia of Field Hockey were named the Male and Female PNC Athletes of the Year. Both have given major contributions to their teams while maintaining high GPAs. You know, Megan and Chase, we only have two shows left, but Temple fans can be sure to stay updated all summer long by following TU underscore Sports Desk. Back to you guys in the studio. We'll definitely be doing that. Thank you, Simone. And still to come on Temple Update, Dan Marcel will be here with a look at this last April weekend's weather. Be sure to keep it locked. Temple Update will be right back. Hello, and for all of you Miss Congeniality fans out there, happy April 25th. As per usual, it's not too hot and it's not too cold, so all you'll need today is a light jacket. Now, we have had some beautiful temperatures in the past few weeks ago. They were in the 70s, but now it seems like we're lucky if temperatures reach the high 60s. But let's take a look at the current weather conditions here in our area. Currently, 58 degrees at the airport, 59 in North Philadelphia, 54 in Bucks County, 53 in Westchester, 58 in Delaware County, and 62 in South Jersey. Moving on to the five-day forecast, later today, expect a high around 62 with winds around 13 miles an hour, so a bit breezy. Cooling off later tonight, a low around 42 so those of you going to the Phillies games may want to bring a jacket it is going to be a cold one Friday we'll see similar conditions 66 degrees and sunny Friday night a low of 46 degrees and it is much the same story weather wise for Saturday 66 degrees and it's not until Sunday that we finally see temperatures get warmer and we'll finally see those temperatures in the 70s that we're used to a high of 70 on Sunday with sunny conditions and it'll be getting warmer and back to normal so overall a very different feel this weekend from what we're used to a lot of cooler temperatures but starting next week we'll see those warmer temperatures start to stick around for all of your latest weather updates be sure to follow us at tu underscore weather watch back to you in the studio thank you dan and for all you fellow prince harry fans out there he made a special appearance at the london marathon on sunday morning before the runners raced towards the finish line they paused to remember the victims of the boston bombing the runners wore black ribbons as, they sh as a show of solidarity for those who were killed or injured by the explosions. Every runner who finished the London Marathon said they will donate $3 to help the Boston victims. And that's all for this edition of Temple Update. We thank you for tuning in. For new more news and information, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Just search Temple Update. That's right, and you can also watch us on TUTV, which is Comcast Channel 50, and Verizon Fios Channel 45. For Chase Senior and the rest of the Update team, I'm Megan McNerney. We'll see you next time.